Okay, so Lieutenant Tom Lennon from 845 Squadron, uh, part of the Commander Helicopter Force, based here at Royal Naval Air Station Yeovilton in Somerset. And uh, we fly uh, the Commando Merlin Mark IV, which is the aircraft behind me, uh, ultimately for Joint Helicopter Command, which is Tri-Service Battlefield Helicopter Organisation alongside the Army and the RAF. So Merlin, Commando variant, is 75 feet long, weighs the best part of 16 tonnes, and is designed to move Royal Marines and their equipment around the battlefield. But we can use it in a variety of roles, including humanitarian aid and disaster relief and uh, evacuation operations, and I'll talk you through the aircraft now. So one of the biggest features we have to help us, um, strong set of wheels, nose cone and sponsons. That means the aircraft can land on all sorts of surfaces from uh, desert sand to ice and snow, decks of a ship or ashore as we see it now. It's very versatile in where it can go. For flying over the sea, we've got flotation gear. So big flop bags that come out at the front and on the sponsons as well, and that keep the aircraft uh, floating if we had to ditch into the sea for any reason. One of the most useful elements of the aircraft in terms of working in a humanitarian aid and disaster relief role is a cargo door. So that gives us this enormous opening and it means we can load anything in here from first aid supplies, food, drink, um, on even stretchers. Up top here we've got a winch. Best part, 270 kilos will go on that. That means we can winch several people at a time, get a winchman down on the cable with stretchers and we can extract people from the sea, from land, in all manner of potential disaster situations. And this aircraft's really safe, ideal for flying over water and the battlefield environment. It's got three jet engines, putting out about 6,500 horsepower in total. It's got three hydraulic systems and three independent fuel systems. And that means that there's lots of what we call redundancy. So if we have a problem, the aircraft will keep going. As we come around to the tail, the Mark IV variant has had a 450 million pound upgrade program. And one of the biggest changes there is that we can fold the entire tail section which is 6.6 .6 metres tall, all the way around here, and fold the main rotor head as well. And that means this aircraft can shrink to a third of its size for storage on a ship, which is amazing. We can get so many more aircraft on board. Coming around here, probably the most useful element for uh, getting casualties on, getting uh, injured personnel, medical support personnel, is the ramp. So we can drop this thing and we can get stretchers on pretty easily, or fighting troops as required. Normally we'd expect to see a general purpose machine gun sat here in the battlefield role, but obviously we can, we can modify the aircraft for uh, the disaster and aid relief role as we need to. Coming inside, we're kitted out here for 20, 20 seated personnel. We can actually put another beam across the door, giving us four extra seats. And every single one of these is crash resistant, uh, should the worst happen. We get 16 stretchers in here, which is a huge amount of capability for um, injured or unwell personnel. And that means we can move large numbers with relatively small amount of aircraft. The aircraft itself is perfectly designed to move people who might be um, suffering from illness in some way. Drop the top here and we've got an IV drip holder so medical personnel can provide the uh, intravenous fluids that are required. All, all this is going on while the aircraft's on the move. If we're in a situation where we need to winch somebody, that winch that I mentioned can be controlled from the air crewman here. So they can actually take a limited degree of flying control authority from the pilot and use this joystick to actually operate the aircraft up to about 10 knots in speed either way, which is a bit strange for us in the front going hands off. Big feature here in terms of moving stores around. So down here we've got the hook. You can put over four tonnes on this and this will move all sorts of equipment under slung uh, on, a, on the giant hook and strop system underneath the aircraft and we can even move fairly large vehicles so heavy laden Land Rovers that kind of thing. Throughout the floor of the aircraft we've got fuel tanks. So this aircraft burns around 800 kilograms of fuel an hour which is a huge amount but actually because we can put over three tons of fuel in the aircraft you can keep going for hours at a time and when you're flying about 150 miles an hour the range you can cover is huge going to uh, disaggregated communities and providing aid where it's required. Moving forward we've got the cockpit which is where uh, I'd sit to fly. So we've got a two, a two uh, person crew here uh, with the captain in the left hand seat and the handling pilot in the right and the captain will mission manage the sortie while the other individual flies and we'll sometimes swap that over and you'll, you'll fly in both seats during the sortie. This aircraft I mentioned the huge upgrade programme, the front's been ripped out and we've got a brand new avionics suite so that means that what we can do with the aircraft, the search and rescue capabilities it has have been 
exponentially enhanced and makes this thing pretty much perfect for the kind of uh, humanitarian aid and relief operations that we're going to be sent on.